Hello, this is Ben Smith from ultrasoundoftheweek.com. I've been asked by a couple people recently how I create animated GIFs for posting on the internet or on Twitter. And so I wanted to create a quick video tutorial on how to do that. Um, the, the tool that I use to create animated GIFs, there's a bunch out there, but the, I think the one that's the most flexible that gives you the best control over the quality of the GIF and the size of the GIF is Adobe Photoshop. So um, today I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC. I'll go ahead and open that up. Um, the first thing you want to do is uh, go to File and Import and then Video Frames to Layers. This opens up a new dialog here. You want to select your your ultrasound clip. I've got a really good ultrasound clip of aortic regurgitation. So I'm going to select that and click Open. This is a patient who has aortic dissection with aortic regurgitation that's brand new. And you'll bring up a dialog box here. This dialog box, you want to make sure that you have selected the second box here, selected range only. You're going to just pull out part of this ultrasound clip. If you pull the whole six second clip in there, it's going to make a eight megabyte file, which is really unreasonable to post on the internet. And it's way bigger than what Twitter will allow. So you got to narrow it down to just a couple of important uh, frames that you're going to select. And then you want to make sure that uh, this limit to every two frames is unchecked and then make frame animation is checked. And now you're going to want to grab these sliders on the bottom to select the portion of the ultrasound clip that you want to turn into a GIF. You can actually play through the whole clip just to get an idea of what it looks like and, and where you'd like to pull. When you're looking at an ultrasound of the heart, you want to select at least two beats of the heart for your GIF. Because if you just select one, one beat, it's going to look really obvious when it repeats. So what you want to do is find something in the, in the cardiac cycle that's repeatable, like the opening mitral valve, or um, here I'm just going to use the color because it's really obvious. So when the color goes away, I'm going to start there. So just pull over to the right, and when the color first goes away, right there, that's where I'm going to select my first frame and then release. And then I grab my second slider and try to, try to figure out where two beats are. So real close to the first bracket, and then slide over the colors there. And then it goes away, and then colors back, and then right when it goes away, first frame, I'll release. So I've got two beats in here. Now I'm going to click OK. It may take a couple of seconds, but Photoshop is going to make one animated GIF frame per frame of the video clip on the bottom here. If you don't see this bottom timeline here, go to Window, and then make sure Timeline is checked. Now, if what you see looks like this right here, where you see all these layers on the bottom, click this little bo uh, box down here in the left lower corner, convert to frame animation, and then click continue, and you should get back to where you were here. Now, underneath each frame is a time, and that's the time that that frame is going to be displayed in the GIF. This is a 30 frame per second ultrasound clip. A lot of That's a pretty standard uh, frame, frame rate. Uh, especially when you have color on. Now, if you have a really a good ultrasound machine, um, you may get a frame rate that's as high as 60 frames per second or even higher, um, and you need to make sure that this time is appropriate. So for 30 frames per second, uh, 0.03 seconds is the, the right time per frame. You can just do the division 1 divided by the frame rate. Um, and I can actually hit play here and look at how my GIF's going to look. This isn't the actual real-time speed, but it actually you know, shows you how it's going to loop. So um, right there, I just uh, told you it was going to loop, but it didn't because I have selected over here once. So you need to make sure you select forever. Let's try that one more time, forever. And now it'll loop, uh, loop around and around and around. So let me just play that for you. I just hit the uh, space bar instead of hitting the play button there. So it looks pretty good. It looks pretty natural. You know, when it, when it loops around, it looks like it's at the same heart. Hit space to hit the space bar again to stop the video. And if you wanted to change the time um, of all of these frames, you don't have to go through one by one and change the time on every frame. You can select the first frame, scroll to the end, and select the last frame. And if you decide you want to change the time, you select underneath, and then you got to select from the the, uh, the time list here. Now, none of these times are really appropriate for a 30 to 60 frame per second ultrasound clip, so you really you have to hit other and then type in what you want your frame rate to be. 
Since I know 0.03 is good for this clip, I'll just leave it there. There, oftentimes you'll have an ultrasound clip where you where you actually want to crop out some of the information. I've got some extra black space over here and over here, but you may have some hip hip information at the top. So to crop your ultrasound image, you want to hit the C button or click on the crop tool over here. I just hit the C button and pull in your bars on the side just to the ultrasound information that I, I want to keep. I'll pull it into right there. I'll leave my ultrasound of the week uh, icon on there for everybody to see. So, and then once you got the spots you, that you wanted that you're ready to crop, just hit the enter button and it'll crop to what you've selected. So I've cropped my ultrasound clip. I've got all my animation frames ready to go. So I'm now, now ready to export to GIF. So go to file, save for web. And this will bring up a complicated looking dialog box. Uh, and first thing you want to see is the quality of the image. It's going to do a preview right here of what your GIF's going to actually look like. Second thing I want to point out is down here in the left corner, it shows you the, the, uh, the file type. Right now I have selected GIF. You want to make sure the first box up here you've selected GIF. If you're on JPEG or, or Ping, PNG, or uh, W bitmap, it's not going to actually create an animation. You want to make sure you have GIF selected. Underneath that is going to be the size, the current uh, size of your exported GIF given the options that you have selected on the right hand side. If you look my quality is pretty crummy. It looks real grainy. I can actually hit preview here to see how it's going to look. It'll open it up in a web browser. It may take a second. So in the web browser it's real grainy, almost useless. Click back on Photoshop. The good news is I've got some room to work with. One megabyte is pretty small GIF. Um, and if you're going to export a GIF to Twitter, you have up to two megabytes to export. So you want to start modifying these options over here to improve your uh, image quality. Usually I keep this on selective, this one on diffusion, and uh, you can leave, leave transparency um, and no transparency dithering algorithm selected. Again, you can play around with all these to change the image quality. The most important things that you want to change that will dramatically alter the size of the file um, is this right here, which is lossiness, this right here, which is the number of colors, and then down here, the image size. So first of all, I can tell you that this looks really pretty crummy. When you're looking at color, if you actually have an ultrasound image that has color in it, you're going to want to go with 256. Now, if this were just a black and white image, I could probably go with 32 or 64, but I'm going to have to export this with color. And you see right right away that put my file size up to 2.4 megabytes. So I'm going to have to start altering things to make it smaller. Lossiness, this describes compression that the GIF uses. Uh, GIF compression is not nearly as good as JPEG or pink compression. Uh, and so when you when you push this up, you know, past 50%, the image quality you'll see in a second here. I'm not sure if it comes through, but it gets really grainy really quick. And so I usually don't go above maybe uh, 10 to 20% on the, uh, the lossiness uh, compression. You leave these box at default, convert to sRGB, use a monitor color, metadata, Just you, want, you don't want any meta metadata to be put into this output image. Um, if there's any HIP information in here, you want, you want to make sure that it's stripped out, so you want to leave that on none. And then image size, this is going to really uh, change the size of your image uh, pretty dramatically, uh, the, the file size. So let me put this lossiness, let's put it down about 10%. Let me just show you how this dramatically changes. So if you look, our file size down here is 2.57, <clears throat> which is close. If I want to put this on Twitter, i got to get down below 2.0 megabytes. So I can just change the image size. Let me just put this from 629 down to 600. And then I'll select the second box, and then it'll, it'll calculate the size of the file. And then our 2.39. And as you see, as, as you watch, I'm going to put this on to 575. When I change this to 575, 575, it automatically changes the height because I've got this, uh, this little chain bar uh, is on. Now I select my second box and it'll calculate the file size for me again. 2.2. Let's just go down to uh, 530. That's 1.9, so we're below 2 now. 
if you see this right here uh, and the chain isn't on there, then it won't keep your proportions the same. You got to make sure that chain is on. So uh, you want to make sure that forever on your looping is selected and then I'm pretty much ready to go. If you want to see how this looks uh, in a browser, you can click preview. Let's see how that looks. Pretty good. This is about this is about what I posted to Twitter yesterday. So at this point, I'm ready to save it. So you click the Save button down here, and then save it. So we'll call this uh, Eordic Regurge GIF. I had this one earlier, so I'll just hit Replace, and it saves it. And I close this down. I want to talk about one more instance of an ultrasound clip that's going to be different than an echocardiogram. So um, let me just go into uh, import video frames to layers. I want to show you one more example. Let's go to down here. I have a really good image uh, of a testicle. And I want to select selected range only and make frame animation. And what I want to do is here is just select an interesting part of the clip. I want to see that bowel move around, the peristalsis in that bowel. So I want to make sure that's in there for sure. But not, you don't want to make, when you're doing this technique, you, you only want to select a pretty small area. This is like uh, maybe one and a half seconds worth of, of uh, an ultrasound clip. And I'll show you why in a second. You click OK. And... Uh, there's a lot of extra information on the sides here that's not being used. I'm just going to crop that out. Again, you can use the crop tool right there or hit the C button. I'm going to hit the C button. Pull my handlebars in. One in the top a little bit here. Pull this one a little more. And then hit enter. And now I've got just the ultrasound information, and if I hit the space bar, I can see how it looks. Now, when it loops, you get this big jump. It's really obvious, and that's what I wanted to tell you about. There's a way you can make that jump go away, and what you're going to do is um, select all of the frames, copy them, and paste them, and then reverse them, so it looks smooth the whole way through. So select the first frame, Drag to the last frame and hit sh hold down shift while you click the last frame. There's a little flyout menu right here. You want to click that. Copy frames. Click it again. Then hit paste frames. You want to make sure paste after selection is selected. Then click OK. And now you see you've got you still have selected this these frames, but now they're at the end. And then you want to hit the flyout menu one last time and hit reverse frames. Let's scroll back to the beginning. Now, now let me just show you what that looks like. Hit the space bar. Now watch the animation. Watch the bowel. Just reverse this direction. Then it goes back to the beginning. And now it's just going to go back. So it loops back and forth. And you can do that with almost any ultrasound clip. It doesn't look good with echocardiogram uh, because it looks like the heart is uh, going in reverse direction. Uh, where you have the, the ventricles contract and then the atria contract instead of the other way around. But it works well on pretty much anything else uh, that is otherwise going to look jumpy. I hit spacebar again to stop that animation, and then you would just go through the same process. File, save for web. I've got GIF selected. My size is 5.49, so it's really, i got a long ways to go here. Since this is a black and white ultrasound image, I'm going to change my colors way down to 32. And if you look at the image here, it doesn't really change the appearance of it, but it got my file size down to 3.1, because there's really not much color. Let me look at 16, see how 16 looks. Eh, it's a little grainy. Did get my size below uh, 2, but I'd rather have a quality looking ultrasound image that is a smaller, uh, smaller looking size. So colors back to 32. Let me change my image size down to, let's just do uh, 225. Calculates my size at 2.1. I'm close. Let's go to 215. Click on the second box. 1.9. Good to go. So you can preview, see how it's going to look in a, in a uh, browser. You can see it's much faster than when it was trying to render it.
in Photoshop. Looks pretty darn good. So now I can click save. I'm going to call this testes, testes, one, two. Save. And I'm good to go. That's it. Thanks for your time.